Hey everybody, this is Dave again coming at you from the Dark Waters Fly Shop. Today I will be tying a stone head egg pattern, uh, stone fly egg pattern. Um, this is one that um, is a very heavy fly. It's meant to get down fast and deep. Um, very little to slow it down in the water so it doesn't, uh, doesn't take much time to get down deep. Um, this is tis the season for stone um, for steelhead fishing so this is uh, something that I thought would be pertinent to this time of year. Um, so with with that I'll just show you a little bit about what I'm what I'm working on here. This is a tied on a number eight Daiichi 1730 curved curved shank 1x uh, strong 3x long. Uh, stonefly hook um, it definitely gives a, your fly a very cool appearance but uh, you can use just about whatever you want if you want to use a like a long shank streamer hook those work good um, I know some people kind of use like the hopper style hooks with the curved shank those work equally well um, so so there's some flexibility you don't have to just use that particular hook you can use pretty much whatever you want um, this pattern that I'm tying has incorporates some of the elements of of, uh, of a very popular fly called the Copper John um, wire body uh, goose by it tail um, you know it's just just a fly that everybody seems to like and use a lot and do well with and uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of pink fuchsia you know some something that I love to use on my flies uh, so that's uh, let's get started this this hook um, so <clears throat> I'm using a it's hard to see but it's a uh, um, a tungsten 532nd or 3.8 millimeter um, tungsten tungsten bead and go on there okay and then directly behind the bead I use what's called a bug collar and these are sized to the type of beads that you have and they slide on right behind right behind the hook or right behind the bead and give your it just it's a very cool cool way of adding a little extra weight um, they have a very cool kind of a an appearance to them um, so and it uh, just just makes it a little bit more convenient too if you're tying in a, a, a bushy thick uh, thorax um, like we have on, on this particular pattern um, and then behind this to lock it all in place I'm using some 25 uh, one thousandths lead free round wire which I kind of just wrap wrap around the shank like such I started started pretty far back um, and then just wrap my way forward and then once I've got it close to where I want I just pull break it off and then take a again you just don't want to use your good fly tying scissors for cutting that stuff but you know a nail clipper or anything like that works really well um, I like to put a little bit of super glue Z-Mint um, which is what this is called behind, on and around the, the wire itself just prevents it from getting pushed back as you're casting or bouncing off the rocks or anything like that for this pattern I'm using 70 denier um, UTC ultra thread in fluorescent orange um, you can use pretty much whatever color thread you want but this one just I, I choose this because of the orange bug collar that's on there so it just blends in really well when you're trying to finish off the finish off your fly right at the end so build that up break it off and then as I said earlier I'm gonna be using some fuchsia colored goose biots for for my tail um, as a little side note I sometimes use um, just regular round uh, rubber legs for this pattern too the, the rubber legs you know I just cut them off fairly short um, but I I would say the rubber legs are a little bit easier to tie in and use so if you don't if you're not totally comfortable with with the goose biots rubber legs are definitely a cool cool option for this pattern too 
and there's there's a couple different ways of, of tying in your goose biots. Um, for this particular pattern, I like to give myself a little little blob of dubbing, and this is Spirit River UV two caddis dubbing. A little bit of a modern modern touch here. Now you don't have to do this particular method. You can just tie them in kind of the standard standard way with with the goose biots but I like to make a little bit of a blob of dubbing right at the right close to the bend of the shank and then trim it off a little bit make it make it look nice and what I do is I take my stripped goose biot quill and what you want to do is just cut off a couple sections there I've already done this so I have them set up and ready to go they're very small and they have typically have a little bit of a curve to them so for the purposes of this video I'm just going to be tying them in one at a time sometimes when I'm trying to move a little faster I'll do both at the same time but but it's a little little harder to see um, so I'm just going to do one at a time and what you do with that is you put it alongside the shank of the hook pinch it in tie it in and get it kind of positioned how you how you want and then tie it back towards that towards that little blob of dubbing there and then you go ahead take your other one with the curve going outwards so in this case towards me and then match it up pinch it in on the side of the shank and tie it in backwards again right right up close to that little blob of dubbing there so you end up with with a little bit of a kind of a cool looking little separated quill by it tail um, as I said before too this is gonna end up incorporating some of the elements of of the old copper John so I'm using ultra wire in size large in copper you know you that's another one where you can use whatever whatever color suits you um, you know I've, I've tied these in using black wire, chartreuse wire, blue wire, pretty much whatever whatever you like. So it's not uh, doesn't have to be terribly scientific, just whatever whatever you got on hand works. And then I tie that in. And because this wire is pretty stiff, you really want to tie it in tight and get it get it locked in good and then roll your way towards the back. Again, ending right about where where that little blob of dubbing is. And like I said, you really want to lock this in tight or it'll, it'll tend to move around on you a little bit. And, uh, you know, that just makes for not quite as finished appearance. Nothing, again, nothing wrong with that, but I just, just like to do it that way. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of giving myself a nice tapered, smooth, body to work on here just taking a little extra little extra thread to give it a nice taper and then once once I think I've got the general taper that I'm looking for I don't like to have too much of this wire but I'm gonna cut off a little cut off a little chunk here so I'm not fighting it okay, set that aside and then I'm going to start winding that towards the front and then I'm going to use the use my little tool here to keep my thread out of the way and then if you happen to have a rotary vise this makes it a little a little easier just to wrap wrap your way forward trying to keep your wire nice and close turns you know it just looks a little a little more professional look looks a little bit more finished to have a nice nice tight wraps on there look your way forward this is just one more little, little way to get some extra weight on these flies just you know the typically you fish those types of rivers for steelhead and they're you know springtime they're flowing fast you know and so you really want to want to be able to get that fly down deep and fast so this just one more way of 
adding some weight to this. Get that out of my way. Okay. And again, just kind of tie that in nice and nice and tight, lock it in there good. Clip that off. So at this point, I'm, I'm going to use a little bit of a flashback um, with this particular fly. And again, going with the, the fuchsia theme here, I'm going to be using some fuchsia colored holographic tinsel. So just a few strands of that will do. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you want to take that, get it up under your thread there with a couple wraps and then fold it back. Fold it back and then tie it back to where to about where you ended off with your copper your wraps of copper wire and then kind of just fold it back and out of the way for the time being there. At this point I'm using a scud uh, shell back. It's a, just a vinyl or rubber type type product but it makes it look for a nice clean looking uh, scud or uh, wing case I should say for this particular fly trick is to just get it tied in so it stays nice and straight when you when you wrap it back towards your towards your uh, tinsel and your copper wire and everything like that and then just and just lock it down okay at this point <clears throat> I'm going to be using some hot pink Orvis brand Estaz uh, chenille. Um, can use again whatever whatever color suits your preferences, but this um, again is kind of a steelhead pattern, and they tend to tend to like the pink colors and and blues and things like that. So this um, this is what I'm using for now. Um, if you choose to modify this pattern and use it for for like trout or something, you can use you know whatever color you you want you know I've used olive black um, regular old pearl color um, anything like that so at this point I want to do I believe about probably three maybe four four wraps of this wrapping my way forward right up behind that bug collar there and then tie it in once you're once you're happy with the uh, with how much you got on there. Um, go ahead and snip that off. So at this point you kinda I kinda like to do a little bit of trimming just because this has a tendency of getting in the rat stuck in your thread and everything like that. So it's nice to kinda clean it up a little bit ahead of time and keep it uh, keep it trimmed up. So now I'm going to take my scud back that I tied in and then fold that forward and tie that down. Give it a few wraps here. Tie it down good. And then you want to, you want to take that. I suppose you could at that point cut it off once you get your, your flash back in too, but I just like to get it out of my way so it's not causing me problems or anything and then with my fuchsia tinsel I fold that up and over the top of the shell the wing case um, and tie that off as well and again now you can just cut that off get rid of it and what I do at this point then just to give it a little bit more finished kind of a finished appearance I take a little bit of my UV UV resin and coat that coat that wing case a little bit and make make a nice little kind of nice little shell on them. Go ahead and go ahead and use my light for a few seconds on there just just to harden it up good. There's a fair amount of it on there, so you want to leave it on a little a little bit longer than normal, but at this point I kind of just 
go ahead, give it a little once over. Actually, I kind of screwed that up just because I should have tied my tied my thread off there, but that's okay. And then just just give it a little trim again just to just to get it how you like it. Clean it up a little bit and call it good. So you end up with a kind of a holographic little flashback on there. Adds a little extra sparkle. Of course you have your your tungsten bead, gets it down to a little extra weight with that with that bug collar. You got your your lead wire under or lead free wire. Uh, wrapped underneath there your copper wire. So this thing is an absolute bomb when it uh, hits the water. It goes down fast um, Great great steelhead pattern. And as I said, it it's one that you can use for uh, For trout you can you know, you can definitely modify it in in, a, in an array of sizes colors Shapes you don't have to use the same hook or anything, but you can use um, as I said streamer hooks work good um, curved hoppers types hooks work good. Um, you know, you could even use a short shank hook if if you wanted to. But uh, this, I just like the shape of these curved um, stonefly hooks here. So, with that being said, that pretty much wraps it up. And uh, and uh, yeah, so this this is the season for stoneflies and or uh, stoneflies and steelheads. So. Good luck out there, and if you got anything out of this video, please feel free to drop a like or comment in the section below, and I'll see you again next time. Tight lines.